Aloha, and thanks for joining us again today for SBA America. Good to have you with us. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about how people have started business, what they've taken on, and how they become successful, and how they define that success. Today we're going to be talking with a small business owner who's what we would call at SBA an encore entrepreneur. <laughs> What's an encore entrepreneur? It means somebody who's had a career or perhaps some different careers, been very, very successful, and on retirement kind of considers what am I going to do next, not am I just going to go and play golf. So today we're talking with Kip Barre. He's the owner of Oahu Home Inspection Services, and he started a whole new career, a whole new job after a successful career in communications. So question is, are a lot of people doing this? What did he think about? And also, well, it is a big trend. I'm not sure, Kit, that you knew you were part of a big trend across America because they've seen a real increase in people on retirement mm. for whatever reason deciding they want to continue or start their own business. Right. So big, big thing with baby boomers, yes. you know. And so tell us a little bit about yourself and what some of your early careers were and the kind of networks you established in doing that. Oh, boy. Uh, you know, every career that I've had, I feel, has added something to my resume. And uh, not just the resume you hand over to somebody, but just your experience and abilities and to do business. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, I started on the radio. My career initially was on the radio. When I was a kid, I was a ham radio operator and an electrical engineer at college. And mm -hmm. when I joined the amateur radio club down the hall, which was a bunch of geeks, basically, mm -hmm. as I was, still have to a certain extent, but <laughs> down the hall was the college radio station, and not mm -hmm. only did they need an engineer, they played music and there were a lot of girls down there. So okay. I, I moved into the broadcast business and had actually on the air my first radio show in Pittsburgh at, at the age of 19, which I, now I did this, and then I was hired to come out to Hawaii in the early 70s to do radio here, which I did for several years. Uh, that was a night job, and I could do other things during the day, so mm -hmm. I had a couple small businesses. I owned an art gallery in Waikiki for a year, um, was mm -hmm. the commissioned artist for a while. And then I remembered what my father said when I graduated from college. You mm -hmm. know, in the graduate where, I can't think of the name, Benjamin is called over by his uncle. He says, mm -hmm. I have one word for you, Benjamin, mm -hmm. plastics. plastics. Well, you know, in the 50s, <laughs> in the early 60s, plastics. My father said uh, two things. He said computers and cable television. Mm -hmm. This was in 1969 or eight or mm -hmm. nine when I graduated from college. And uh, so, when I uh, left the radio business, I went to the cable company. Mm -hmm. And it was a small business in 1982, and I worked there for 20 years. I worked in the marketing department, and I was their public affairs director and their mm -hmm. spokesman because mm -hmm. I was already comfortable talking to people on the air. Uh, that was great, and I retired after 20 years. When my boss retired, I retired, and mm -hmm. I decided I'm retired now. Mm -hmm. Well, a few years later, well, a, a, actually a few months later, a friend of mine who was a home inspector whom I had known, said, you ought to come out with me sometime and see if you'd like to start a home inspection business like mm -hmm. I did. Uh -huh. And I had always sort of worked for other people and uh, had a few small businesses of my own, and I thought, this might work for me. Uh -huh. And here, when most people would retire, I decided I would do this for a few years. Mm -hmm. That was 13 years ago. Unbelievable. And I've done 8,000 home inspections since then. And I already knew quite a bit about business and marketing from my previous jobs, and I knew about promotion from the radio business. Mm -hmm. And so all those things that I had picked up along the way, I found, were quite helpful in running this new business that mm -hmm. I had started. It sounds very interesting, and I think it highlights something that we're finding a lot, is that people do have a number of different skills. People also live much longer, so mm. they want to make themselves and right. feel useful and feel productive, yeah. you know, after their major career experience. So you're kind of a, it sounds like a serial entrepreneur along the way, too, with a lot of different areas. So um, it's interesting to hear how you've taken some of the skills and the experience from each one of those careers mm -hmm. or experiences mm -hmm. in business and translated that in some meaningful way mm -hmm. um, to your business now. And mm -hmm. something that's very, very different going from, say, corporate communications yes. and, and PR to home inspection. Mm -hmm. So maybe tell us a little bit about what exactly it is you do. Okay. Um, well, uh, what um, I do is I help people when they're buying a home. Mm -hmm. uh, suppose you found the house that looks great. Your realtor will call me and say, 
will give the buyer a few names, and if they call mm -hmm. me, I will go to the house and I will inspect it for them. Mm -hmm. And typically, I will look at the condition of the roof. I will look at the foundation of the house, uh, the layout of the land, the plumbing system, the wiring system. There's about mm -hmm. 50 different things that I look at, and I've done this 8,000 times. I have a routine 8, that I go through. Times. Yeah, 8,000 times in my little short career, retirement career of now with 13 years. And here probably is a good time for a disclaimer. I have known Kit for probably more than 20 years as well. Yeah. We're friends yeah. and we sail together. Yeah. And he also did my home inspection. That's, that's right. right. I so, did. Yeah. so he's helped me professionally and as well. And probably some of you out there. Yeah, if you so live in Hawaii, I may have right. done some of your because own. Because that home inspection is required with the sale of a house. Not really. Mm -hmm. um, certain things are required, certain things are not. And a home okay. inspection is still uh, technically a, uh, an optional mm -hmm. option. However, the realtors will require it. Okay. Uh, they'll require it not only, well, they require it primarily because they want their buyers to know what they're buying. Mm -hmm. They don't want to get a call six months later where the person's found problems with the house that they didn't know in the few hours that they had been in it. Mm -hmm. um, if they find problems after they move in, they call me. Mm -hmm if I've inspected it okay. and I'll work it out with them. If mm -hmm. I'll figure out what the problem is or I'll, I'll put them in touch with someone who can help them with it. Mm -hmm. So it, it helps the realtors, it helps the buyers. The buyers buy with a lot more confidence. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so um, you work for the realtor or you work, work with a buyer. lot of realtors, uh -huh. but for the buyer Yes, the buyer pays me, the buyer hires me, the buyer hires me and pays me. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I will do a pre-listing inspection when mm -hmm. a person is selling a house. Okay. I'll go through and do the process and sit down with the seller and talk with them and give them an idea of what the buyer's inspector is going to say when he or she comes out later mm -hmm. on so that the seller can be prepared and can address some of the issues that are likely to show up when the buyer's home inspector. Mm -hmm. comes and visits. Wow. So and so you'll go in and, and the buyers will accompany you in the house or you go through well, with them sometimes? You know, sometimes it's okay so? if they're with me and there mm -hmm. are a lot of home inspectors who will make a point of saying I do not want the client in the house while I'm working. Mm -hmm. And it's because they interrupt the process. Mm -hmm. uh, something that I've done so many times I just have a routine of doing it. And if I get interrupted, I'm afraid I might miss something or I, I kind of lose step mm -hmm. where I am. Concentration. Uh, but I, at the same time, understand when a person's buying a house, they'd like to spend a little bit of time in it. Mm -hmm. They've come to the open house and maybe they got to walk through afterwards. They can come. But I tell them, let me work for two and a half hours Mm -hmm. uninterrupted, then I will sit and talk with you. Now, communication, remember, is one mm -hmm. of the things that I was good at doing because okay. I did it since I was on the air 19 years of age. Mm -hmm. I believe not only a, a, a technical understanding of what it is I'm examining, and I was an engineer in college, so I mm -hmm. have an understanding of electricity, and I re-plumbed mm -hmm. a house that I once owned and re-roofed a house once when I was a kid with my dad who had us up on the roof, so I learned a lot about those things. But communicating the results of the inspection to the buyer in a mm -hmm. way that's understandable, mm -hmm. educational, and fun. I've mm -hmm. always felt that this should be fun, and the realtors almost always say to me, I always learn a lot. Mm -hmm. when I come to the inspections about houses. So oh. That makes it good for everybody, mm -hmm. and for me too, because the best thing for me is talking with the buyers. Mm -hmm. uh, the clients are the most fun. The house mm -hmm. is the house. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're challenging. Usually they're you nice. probably found Sometimes some big surprises. Ooh, yeah. You know, that what, yeah. are, what are some of the, the biggest surprises you found going through a house that perhaps saved people well, I'm a always, lot of money? I'm, well, I'm always hoping that I'll go up in the attic and there'll be this duffel bag full of $100 bills from some <laughs> drug deal that went bad <laughs> oh. that no one wants to talk about. Okay. <laughs> but no, it's usually much more mundane than that. I was uh, out in the Leeward Coast, out mm -hmm. in Lyonai, and a hot, sunny summer day and the grass was all kind of dry, and I'm walking around the outside of the house. And this house is what we call a crawler. Mm -hmm. This is when I can actually get underneath. Oh. And with my camera to take pictures under the house. And a little girl who lived there runs over and says, you want to know what I found under, are you going to go under the house? She said, I said, yeah. She said, do you want to know what I found under the house? I thought, well, if it's a bag full of money, yeah, you know, okay. <laughs> I'll split it with you. <laughs> she went and got a mayonnaise jar, and in it was this sandy-colored scorpion. Now, oh. I've never seen scorpions on the island, but underneath this house, apparently, there were. So I pretty much walked around the perimeter with a floodlight and a camera and didn't crawl underneath that Oh, one. okay. <laughs> you know, I worked in an office for a long time and mm -hmm. had nice clothes. I mean, I was dressed nicely like you all dressed up, you know. And uh, now I'm, I'm a blue co yellow collar guy now. Mm -hmm. But um, 
Sometimes I'm crawling around under a house, you know, and I'm padding around. I have gloves on and I have knee pads on. and I have a dumb looking headlight on my head to look mm -hmm. around, camera around my neck and put my hand in something and... Oh, oh no. Cat. And, uh, cat. <laughs> oh. And then I think back to the days when I dressed up and went to the Plaza Club for lunch and, <laughs> and did all, <laughs> had a nice air conditioned office. But, but that's the thing, you know, when you retire, Beggars can't be choosers. When I retired oh, wow. at the age of 55 or so, I found it was hard to find a job. Mm -hmm. Who's going to hire a 55-year-old guy who'd been working 20 years at a company mm -hmm. to, and made good money and a good salary? Mm -hmm. And now we'll probably, probably expect that when he walks in through the door okay. of the new place. Yeah, that, that is one of the big challenges I think a lot of people face, that they're thinking about making a change or um, leaving a company they're with, or they downsize, or they do something different, yeah, yeah. and the situation changes. It's time to do something different. So I think what we'll talk about next, we're going to go to a quick break, Good. but I'd love to talk a little bit more about um, the work that you're doing uh, and what you call success mm -hmm. and, you know, what, uh, what's most fulfilling mm -hmm. about this new career. Okay, we'll be back with you. Aloha, my name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We are the co-hosts of Keys to Success, which is live on ThinkTech live streaming network series, weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha. Hello, this is Martin Despang. I want to get you excited about my new show, which is called Humane Architecture for Hawaii and Beyond. And it's going to be on ThinkTech Hawaii from downtown Honolulu on Tuesday afternoons, 5 p.m. And we're going to talk about uh, to make architecture more inclusive on the islands, which is, what hu which is one of the definitions of humane, which is being tolerant of uh, you know, many people, of nature, of many other influences. So we're going to have some great guests, like today's guest, for example, uh, my collaborator, David Rockwood, who is the author of the awesome um, manifestation of uh, humane architecture in the background. So see you on Tuesdays, 5 p.m. I look forward to what? <laughs> Hi, here we are with Kip Beret of Oahu Home Inspection Services, and we're talking about a, a second career, an encore entrepreneur career. So we've talked a little bit about how he started his venture and what he does with this new business that is so different from his career in corporate communications. I want to talk about that decision. Your friend took you out mm. and said, maybe you like doing this. Mm -hmm. You're handy around the house. You know a lot about homes. You've owned several homes yes, yes. here in Hawaii, yes. so you know what some of the problems are that you might encounter. Mm -hmm. But as he kind of showed you what he was doing, what were you thinking about, or how did you come to a decision to start your own business in this field? Well, there was a certain um, motivation mm -hmm. to uh, find a job that I would enjoy, that I could make money at. I had mm -hmm. two uh, kids in college mm -hmm. and a mortgage. And uh, if, if I can't think of a greater motivator than that. <laughs> you know, when you're unemployed all of a sudden after being employed for 30, mm -hmm. 40 years. Uh, so I was motivated, and, uh, but this seemed like, this was also, uh, I had to work for myself. My father said long ago, you'll never get You'll never get rich working for somebody yes. else. That's a mm -hmm. phrase that we all heard. And that's what motivates a lot of people to start their own businesses. That's mm -hmm. one of the reasons is the money. Mm -hmm. And so I had set some goals. I, wanted, I had a monthly goal to make every month. I had to make X mm -hmm. number of dollars. And if, I weren't, if, if the money wasn't coming in, I would work on weekends and, mm -hmm. and do whatever I could. So, uh, goal so setting money was a important. motivator. Money and uh, goal setting. Because I couldn't find a job at 55 that would pay me a decent wage that I would enjoy doing. And mm -hmm. I was pretty much set in my ways anyway. Mm -hmm. So, And I'd owned a small business earlier, and I kind of liked it. Uh, one of the things that I, I would, will sometimes say to young people uh, is an experience I had. I thought I would like to open a restaurant one time because mm -hmm. I had this great uh -huh. idea for a restaurant. Uh -huh. um, and I had a friend well, who said... Well, you are a good cook, too. Uh, yeah. No. I enjoy eating. <laughs> I had a friend who also said that she wanted to start a business, and she just loved going into, like, gift shops, you know, and mm -hmm. going on. She said, I just love that ambiance of all this stuff, and people come in. Well, um, my, my love of having a restaurant was... Uh, the reality was, I've never owned, owned a restaurant before, mm -hmm. and I have learned that restauranting is a very difficult thing in Hawaii, mm -hmm. and there's a lot that I didn't know about it. Mm 
I just kind of blindly thought that would be a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. As far as the gift shop, my friend had never spent a day in retailing, uh -huh. nor had she ever gone out and competitively <laughs> bought and shopped and gone to whatever else you have to do. Mm -hmm. So you have to pick something that you have already some skills and knowledge in, mm -hmm. and not just book knowledge, not just going to a college and mm -hmm. studying a book on how okay. to open a store. There's a, much, a mentor would be nice. Mm -hmm. We can uh, help this, with that in at this SBA. Case, yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. And, you know, SBA is really, if you want to open a small business, I would think that that would be one of the first places you go. Mm -hmm. Because if SBA can provide the information, good. If not, they'll refer you to somebody right. who can help you get mm -hmm. started. And the ways to get money and get funding and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, but I already knew how to take care of houses, and mm -hmm. I enjoyed being with people. And so this worked out for me. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't work for someone who doesn't, really have an mm -hmm. understanding right. of how homes work and I've known home inspectors who didn't succeed because they had problems when they had to deal with the buyers. Okay. So I just happened to have those two things going for me and mm -hmm. I, I didn't know everything when I started. I learned a lot as I went along. Mm -hmm. So that you had a good good network, good communication skills, oh, well, an yes. interest and some experience in this area. Well networking um, is and just a motivation. Said yeah, oh I was well motivated <laughs> all right. Uh -huh. But networking, of course, underlies an awful lot about small business. The more people mm -hmm. you know, the more likely you are to have customers and get referrals. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are some groups in town there's, uh, that, that work with, to get people, to help people mm -hmm. network. You know? mm -hmm. And there, are, I was in one for a while where business cards was the big deal. You always carried business cards around, mm -hmm. and you carried business cards around of the people you knew in businesses that mm -hmm. you respected. And you handed out cards all the time. Right. And one of the early, my early goals was to hand out a thousand business cards a year. Mm -hmm. You can buy them by the thousand online. Right. And um, I found out it wasn't too hard to do. I mm -hmm. meet people every day. My wife joked because she said, what have you got a card dispenser on your belt? Every time you meet somebody, it seems like when you shake hands, you hand them your card. Well, mm -hmm. I'm, I gotta, I'm behind <laughs> this week on my, getting, on my dispensing of cards. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the more people you know, you know, and the nice thing is if you've been in Hawaii for a long time, you know a lot of people. Mm -hmm. If you're just coming to the islands, it takes a little while, I would think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so another thing about en entering a new field, um, were there a lot of well, a lot of startup investments for you, mm -hmm. or, or you know, office space, mm -hmm. franchise, anything like that you looked at at all? No, and that was <laughs> the beauty of it. I bought a bag full of tools uh -huh. and uh, just worked out of my house. I mean, I just woke up in the morning and mm -hmm. got my forms together and went out, and then I get phone calls all day long from realtors. Mm -hmm. I know. I probably have 50 realtors that I can count on when they have a buyer to call me mm -hmm. and ask if I'd like to do these. So over the years, after 13 years, I have a lot of people know me and I've worked mm -hmm. with and are happy with the work I do, so it's easy now. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, I had to make up a brochure. I went online and downloaded and did it myself. Mm -hmm. And now that I look at it, it looks kind of amateurish, but at the time it was something I could drop off at real estate offices mm -hmm. and of course a stack of cards. Mm -hmm. So okay. that was how I got the word out, and any time I would go to inspect a house, I would always make sure that the seller's realtor got a card, and I left a card behind because the person's moving, they might have to buy a house and mm -hmm. get those cards out there. Every time I paid a bill that I handwrite, remember those? Mm -hmm. had to handwrite yeah. those? Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. I'd stick one of my cards in the envelope and send it off with my bill payment and this stuff. I figure somebody opens that envelope. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. it just kind of peppered the town. And that, mm -hmm. so I've got over 10,000 cards out there now. Over the so years. a lot of networking, a lot of word of mouth, referrals from, from happy customers, happy realtors. Yes, you know, another thing I've always said to realtors when they say, oh, he's the best one there is. He's the best home inspector I ever saw. I've always felt it's important to undersell and over deliver. Mm -hmm. I've always felt that if you give people more than they're expecting, mm -hmm. they'll be happy. And in my case, when I do a ins home inspection, the nice thing about a home inspector is he gets paid at the time mm -hmm. of the inspection. And so it's a difficult time when a person has to sit down and write a check to pay for something, mm -hmm. especially if they're not particularly happy with what they're getting. So I, a measure for me of success is if they smile when they hand me the check uh -huh. uh, and say something like, well, I really learned a lot, or thank you very much when I leave them. I, they say, oh, thank you so much. I figure I must have done my job right. Mm -hmm. And then I feel good about myself. If I have a customer who doesn't look completely happy, I go home and I tell my wife, you know I trying to think how I could have done that job better because I know I gave them all the information they need, but they just didn't smile mm. at the end. 
It wasn't because you told them about the termites or anything <laughs> like that, huh? <laughs> really. Sometimes that could have something to do with it, I yeah, think. But right, uh, right. you could have just saved them a, a lot of money you if know, you found something like that. And it's like fun that. for me. I've had jobs that I didn't like. I've, one of my first jobs was selling encyclopedias door to door. Remember encyclopedias? Mm, yes, <laughs> I remember door to door <laughs> salesmen too. Yeah, door to door. And that, if you're just if you're a young person now and you're getting out of college, you know, door to door. I don't think they do door to door selling anymore. Mm -hmm. But a job selling is a real good idea mm -hmm. for you to, a skill you should have. You should recognize when mm -hmm. you, someone is selling you something, and you should understand what it is makes for a successful closing of a sale. Mm -hmm. You know, asking for the money yeah. is always so hard to do until you've realized that if you don't ask for it, you're never going to get mm -hmm. it. So in some of those sales, uh, those sales experience, did you kind of, is that where you got some of your goal setting ideas or your numbers and things like that? Because... Oftentimes, yes. some sales organizations yes, yes. are driven so yes. much by producing numbers. That's true. And, and, and I learned in, uh, in uh, uh, selling encyclopedias and, and making sales that you, you sell, maybe you have to figure out how many, uh, how many tries you have to take before you actually make the sale. Mm -hmm. Maybe your record is, you know, I, I pitch this thing five times and I make a sale. Car dealers, you know, I have to talk to about 20 different people before I sell a car. Well, good. The more people you see, the more often you're going to get the sales. Right. It's not so much the case in what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't so much the case when I worked for the cable business. I want to tell you, people make, like, enjoy making fun of cable companies, you know, how mm -hmm. terrible the service is. I've never worked for a more ethical operation than the cable company here in Hawaii. And I'm not, mm -hmm. I, don't, I haven't worked there in 15 years. Mm -hmm. But I was so proud to be their spokesman because of the way they did things. They just did things that had the highest standards of ethics. Mm -hmm. And I, that had a very strong effect on me when I do my work. Mm -hmm. if I just feel that you have to not only enjoy it, you have to really respect the customer and just give mm -hmm. them absolutely everything that they could possibly want. Mm -hmm. So That's that customer you, relationship is very oh, important Oh, it to is. You. You, can't go, you can't get lazy with your customers. You have mm -hmm. to always be there and smiling and, mm -hmm. and, and informing <laughs> them and giving them more than they expect you. Mm -hmm. So you think that ethics piece, that customer satisfaction has also propelled your success in, in um, no your business? Mm -hmm. No question about it. I may not be the best, the most detailed inspector there is, mm -hmm. although I, I've learned a lot from doing it over and over again. But I know the reputation I have is that I can present the information to the buyers clearly and in a way that um, they understand complicated issues that mm -hmm. otherwise might just blow by them and leave them in a fog. Mm -hmm. um, it just comes from doing it over and over again and um, thinking about it, maybe mm -hmm. even taping yourself as you mm -hmm. do it so that you can have a chance to figure out what works best. Mm -hmm. So you've always been kind of checking your progress, checking how you're doing with your customers. Oh, yes. And is that primarily the number, the number of clients per week? Has that been a measure of your success, or how do you how do you look at what you've accomplished in the 13 years, Kip? Yeah, well, I'll tell you, if on a week to week basis, if you find that all of a sudden you don't have any jobs on Thursday and Friday, you worry about it and you think the end has come. <laughs> oh no, uh, uh, the bottom has fallen out of the real estate market, or mm -hmm. no one loves me anymore. Mm -hmm. But uh, then, you know, the next week comes along and things pick up. So you mm -hmm. have to figure out what range you want to measure. I do it month by month. Mm -hmm. I just plot it. I, I put it all into Excel and I plot it on a graph. And I'm not a, I'm not a CPA. I just mm -hmm. have to have some sense that I'm doing okay. Okay. And it, so the mortgage gets the, paid every month, you mm -hmm. know, college loans get paid. So those business management skills were not too daunting for you to develop it? Uh, not or? for me. And I'm, you know, I don't have any employees. Mm -hmm. um, I was at one time the manager of a couple of radio stations. And although I really enjoyed the field, mm -hmm. uh, there were always problems. Mm -hmm. you know, problems, problems. And it's gotten more complicated now with regulations and, mm -hmm. and insurance and all the other things <laughs> you have to do. And I, I do now have a young man, an assistant who works with oh, me. Oh, okay. He's just a recent graduate of the Army, 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. He's a great helper. And uh, he'll, the baby bird will fly the nest. He's done 30 inspections uh -huh. with me. And pretty soon he'll be out on his own. But if I had to pay him, Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> That'd be another story. So he's kind of like an apprentice. Absolutely. Or he's, an he, intern. He's a sponge, That's is what uh -huh. he is. He's uh -huh. taking it all in. He's learning 
technique and detail and, and electrical and plumbing wow. and all that stuff. So I'm wishing him the best of luck. Mm -hmm. And it's fun to bring someone in and get him started on it. But I have an easy job because remember, I don't have any employees. It's just mm -hmm. me. Just do my ta I have a CPA who does the taxes, which is a, a humbug thing, mm -hmm. but we, we do it. And you're incorporated, right? Yes. So did you do that on your own? Did you get some help with the the formation of your business at yeah. first for that? I was that an LLC in the mm -hmm. beginning, and okay. then um, my CPA recommended uh, incorporation, mm -hmm. which the CPA took care of for me. Oh, very good. Yeah, I really had little to do but uh, except uh -huh. sign papers and give them some money. Okay, write the, write the check, and write the, your name a lot. And the, I, would, I would rather your CPA or your financial advisor tell you what the advantages are of LLC. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, maybe SBA also can very All easily right. explain why you might want to incorporate your business. Right. I think there are a lot of good ways to look at that, but that's a very important feature for people who are getting ready to start a business. Um, but thanks for sharing information about your business and your experience going on. And thank you for helping that veteran get started oh, yeah. as well and uh, on, on his next career. So you not only become successful in your business, in your field, but a great mentor as well. Now, if I could just figure people. out how to really retire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks, Jane. Yeah, that may just be something that you're not quite ready to do yet, well, I guess Kit. you're right. You thank know? you. But uh, thank you for all you do, and congratulations on your second career and being Third. so successful. Third, fourth, fifth. Some people just love to keep on working and giving back to their community. You can see he's influencing other businesses and making people happy in their new homes, too. So thanks very much, Kip, for being here. We have a lot going on with SBA, and we'll see you again next week. Hi everybody, I'm I.C. Davidson. Thanks for watching Think Tech Hawaii. One of the things that we try to do here is promote civic engagement. How do we do that? We put on shows weekdays from 12 to 5 p.m. Um, we let people in in our world on Facebook and all the social media. Today I'd like to talk to you about another way that you can engage us here at Think Tech Hawaii and help us promote civic engagement here in Hawaii. Um, what you do is you get on Twitter, you follow us at Think Tech HI, and during the day, between weekday, weekdays between 12 and 5 p.m., you can interact with each of our live shows. What does that mean? You can send us questions, comments, thoughts, experiences, anything. All you have to do is mention us on Twitter. We'll see it here in the studio, and our hosts and guests will address them accordingly. This is a, a big thing for us. We want to hear from you. The conversation doesn't start here when our show ends. It ends when everybody gets their say. Join us weekdays, 12 to 5 p.m. on thinktechhawaii.com. Join in the conversations live with Twitter, at ThinkTechHI. Thank you for watching. We appreciate your support. See you soon.